Well, good afternoon. <laughs> Just had an interesting experience. Uh, a bunch of turkeys, wild turkeys, came and they started pecking on my figs. <laughs> it was a whole flock of them. I might just post the footage after the fact. It was too late. <laughs> I couldn't stop them. Sometimes they come through here in great numbers. No big damage, but they did peck on some of my Negron that were getting ripe. I've eaten a couple of these main crop Negron, which is my favorite strain of Violet de Bordeaux of all. My personal favorite. And there are some beautiful figs. This is a it's a beautiful little tree. It's loaded with fruit. I took earlier videos of this, which you can see on Lumonti's figs. Uh, the earliest Breba was this tree, Negro. Now I planted this tree. This tree is actually in a pot. It's in a grow bag. I don't know if you can see it now. It's overgrown. But it was around the 10th of May no I'm sorry you know it was before the frost it was about the the 15th of April the 20th of April somewhere around there I don't know the exact date when I knew that even though it was before the end of the official period where you don't have to worry about frost which is May 10th in New Jersey still I, I decided to put it in the ground a couple weeks earlier than that May 1st is usually good. They say May 10th to be sure. I put this in around April the 20th or something like that. As soon as I felt there was, as soon as I felt there was no danger of frost, just because I could tell by the spring and the type of spring we were having, I thought that it would be okay. And if it was going to frost, I would just throw a tarp over it overnight or, or two. But it's been growing in the ground just, just as it would normally if there were no grow bag on it, and I've talked about this technique several times on my videos, it's a technique that I use, that I am recommending. Give it a try, because you don't have to worry about the tree being knocked over by the wind. You don't have to water it nearly as much because it's in the ground And it might take a little bit of a beating, like any tree above the ground or in the ground would, as opposed to a pot that you could take to shelter. But you can see that the grown takes a, it's just a tough, it's a tough tree. It's a wonderful, any of the Violet de Bordeaux strains are, are good. I said, this one's my favorite personally. You may find one that's your favorite, but I do like Negron. I've grown them for so many years. And it's a tough fig. It's a great cultivar. It's a bit late. It is a late cultivar. And if you have it in the ground, it's better to plant it in a sweet spot because if you don't, they may not get ripe for you. The main crop. The Breba will, but the main crop may not, because when you start getting into September and those cold nights, you're further from the solstice, it begins to get rainy, you get crappy weather, you don't have the heat in the day. Right now it's cooling off. Today was 92. It's, I think, the 20th. I think it's August the 20th. And if you don't get an Indian summer your whole crop could very easily get ruined with Violet de Bordeaux in ground. It's better grown in pots in New Jersey in 7A. Let me put this fig down. This one's not ripe enough. I can't, it's ripe enough to open, but let me put it down. and Let me open one here that they tried to get. 
They pecked at it a couple times. <laughs> the rascals. I like the turkeys. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I always have a hard time doing this. <laughs> well, here I go. I put it right down there in the grass and give it a cut. There we go. Sorry, be right back. Of course, you've seen these things before. They're beautiful. Negron. Just another strain, really, of Violet de Bordeaux. Very popular French fig, which I do recommend it, as I said, with those cautionary notes that I added. I'd grow it in a pot, give it an early start. If you put it in the ground, you can do it. I've done it for 40 years, more than that. But put it next to a your home or a wall or a shed, a large wall. Not some stones or something, but, you know, put, put it up against a structure with a good southeastern or south exposure. And you're going to have ripe figs most of the time. Maybe not always. Even there. But it's a good one. I like Rondi Bordeaux better. I like it much better. I like the unique taste. And the fact that it is so early and so productive. But I, I would never, ever remove Negron from my collection, ever. I have, look at it, I have no problem. I'm going to eat part of this. Let me see if I can manage. I'm having a little more difficulty than usual. And I usually have a lot of problems. So hold on a second. Mmm. 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 Oh, they're good. Oh, you, you'll be happy with Violet de Bordeaux. It, it is. It's a great fig. It's a great cultivar. There are better ones. I mean, certainly, but, you know, a little variety is a good idea. And this is a top-notch fig. I mean, it's top-notch in taste. It's just, it's really good, and it's very productive. Mmm. Wow. That's delicious. Honestly delicious. Fantastic. It's a beautiful night. It's so hot today. But right now, across the field there, you can see the horse farm. This is all farmland out here. Oh, look at that. This is a Nordland getting ripe. Right there. A little smaller than it typically is. Nordland's a good variety. Tasty. All right. Here's a nice ripe one here. Let me. Oh, that's a beauty. Wow. I'm going to give that one to my wife. Let me see if I can get that off. <clears throat> mm, look at that. Boy, if that's not a ripe fig. That's a, that's a beauty. Should I open this up for you? Tomorrow there'll be a couple more ready. There are a couple here already. I could eat them right now. But I'll wait. There's, look at that big one. That's beautiful. This is the joy of growing figs. It's such a pleasure. It's a privilege, really. I enjoy it so much. But here you can see the results of planting a grow bag in the ground. I've talked about this on other videos. And you cut around the circumference of the grow bag. This is a five gallon grow bag, this one. And you cut every few inches. You, you cut about eight holes, one and a half inch holes in the bottom of the grow bag, three inches from the bottom. You don't want to go in the bottom because then it's going to be hard to extract it. And when your season's over and they grow just like if they were in the ground, they taste exactly the same. They're great. As I said, the wind doesn't blow them over. You've got complete control over the cultivar. And once you're all finished with your harvest,
you take a special tool which is sort of like a flat-ended machete blade and you just hammer it down all the way around the bag and you break off the roots that went through those holes and then you grab the handles of the grow bag and you you pull the bag the you pull it out of the ground and put it in storage it's a great way to control winter damage because you're removing it you're removing the whole tree you're not covering it you're not doing it i do that too and i'm going to have videos about that but you don't need to do that all the time especially with mid-sized trees small trees that really produce a lot of figs i mean look at these figs you know and they're delicious and they're all going to get ripe all of them okay i'm going to cut this one open too Gosh, it's a beautiful fig. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Negron. Let me give this a cut. There we go. Sorry. Here I come back. All right, there we go. Whoa, look how nice. Let me drop that knife. There we go. Negron. The Breba were delicious. The Breba are delicious. And with my variety here, this Negron, uh, they, they were quite numerous too. They were the earliest. Rondi Bordeaux was a day later or two, but I only got one Breba, and I have a video of that as well. And then right around that time, a work had a, a ripe Breba or two, several really. So it was among the earliest Breba. It was really the first one. And it was the most delicious Breba of all my collection. And I have a lot of varieties in two states. Except... Ron de Bordeaux was a, a close tie a couple days later. And of course, Peter's Honey is a superior cultivar to almost all cultivars. It's my, it's my, it, still, it still remains, I'm going to have to talk about this, because it still remains after all of the figs that I have grown. It still remains my number one honey fig. There's no question about it. It has an aftertaste that's just, it just, it hits you like a hammer, I'm telling you. It's such a delicious, delicious fig. And uncharacteristic of Breba, the Breba of Peter's honey it tastes better than the main crop fig. Which is, which by the way, the main crop pig, the, 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 main, the, the, the main crop fig is superb. Superb. And the Brebas, in my opinion, are even better. So, it always has been the tastiest Breba in my collection until this year. And guess what? Italian 258. And Genovese Nero got ripe at the same time, and I've said this thousands of times. <laughs> to me, they're the same exact fig. I'm convinced of it entirely. The Breebas got ripe on the same day. They looked exactly the same. They tasted exactly the same. And they were spectacular. They were in taste. They were, they were delicious. And so they, I'm sorry, they just edged out my Peter's honey for the best tasting Breba ever. Italian 258. I have to tell the truth about it. I have no other agenda. This is just informational for me. It, But remember, there's no way that that tree is ever going to produce the volume of Breba that Peter's honey does. We're talking a lot of figs. With, a, with Peter's honey. In ground now we're talking. Because I don't recommend Peter's honey too much for 
containers. That's I talked about that before, but we're getting to it another time. But for in ground, it's a superb fig. I love it. And many growers don't know Peter's honey. They don't. And they've never grown it in the ground, for sure. If they did, they would know what I'm talking about. And they don't. So, trust me, I would rather have a Peter's honey for Breva, a Peter's honey tree, than, than even an Italian 258 because of the sheer volume of production. But for taste, for taste, it edged it out. It edged out Peter's. Peter's is a great variety. I, I, I still, and I've tried Golden Riverside this year. I had a fig last year too. I'm talking about Ben's Golden Riverside. Um, and I have some pictures, I posted some pictures of it. And I tasted, my second fig broke off in the wind that blew the pot over. But the first one was perfectly ripe and I tasted it. And it was delicious, but it was not, in my opinion, as good as Peter's Honey. Period. I know that. But it was a young tree. It's a young tree. And that might change. I don't think so. I don't. Peter's honey is an underappreciated, undervalued, missed by many, even though it's been sold by large nurseries, reputable nurseries, for, for decades. For decades. I, I don't understand it. It's a, it's a puzzle to me. And it's cold. It, it's, it's winter hardy. It's very hardy. It's disease free. It produces so many figs. I've got videos of it. And I'm going to make another one pretty soon. Okay, so I've worn that subject down, I think. But this is a great cultivar. I recommend it. The grown. Look at that. I got to save this one for my wife. I'm going to. I'm going to put this down right here. Let's put it under this tree. There we go. And I don't think I'll pick any more tonight. Beautiful night. It's cooling off. It's been so hot. I'm just looking better. I'm looking forward to some cool weather. Just thought I'd share this moment with you with the Negron and have a tree side chat with you. Hopefully you can pick up a pointer here and there. I learn new things every day. This is all for the purpose of sharing. Now I think I'll take a deep breath. It's been a long day and it's been hot watering the figs and watering the garden, watering my trees. I've been busy all day in the hot sun cutting grass on my tractor. Now it's time to sit on a chair, feel the evening breeze, look over all the work I've done, look over the progress of the season, contemplate the approaching fall, think of plans for the future, eat a few figs, have a cup of coffee, and enjoy life, as indeed I do, relish every moment. Thanks for your visit. Have a great weekend.